Hey there, it's Lance, and I wanted to make you a short film about the contemporary history of white label hip hop 12 inches. It's sort of a strange subgenre where if an artist can't get clearance for a sample they want to use, or if they collaborate with someone else and then the two record labels can't work out a deal for having both artists appear on one, one release, or if some song is just kind of too weird or too fucked up, uh, a lot of times an artist will decide to just kind of sneak a dat tape to a pressing plant or someone in their crew will do it and basically run off like 300 to 500, maybe a thousand at most copies to put it on a record. And it'll have just a white label and a white sleeve and the inside groove where you'd normally see the etching from the pressing plant, that'll be scratched out or omitted so you can't trace it back to where it came from. And in this format, a lot of really amazing music has sort of built up a secret history. So I traveled around the country and talked to different people who knew a little bit about this weird subgenre. All right, here we go. Jay Zone, aka Chief Chinchilla, producer, artist, DJ, record collector, all of that, all of that. Uh, we're at Breakdown Records right now in Bayside, Queens. Um, as you can see, we keep it analog. Plenty of cassette tapes, eight track tapes in here somewhere. So it's all analog, it's all good. White Labels is big, and mostly in the 90s, mid 90s, late 90s, uh, early 2000s, you know what I'm saying, it was, it was pretty big. What it was was a way to get music out that you normally couldn't get out for whatever reason. I mean, be it you had a song with a, you know, a great beat with a, with a great sample and you couldn't clear it, sometimes people would sneak it out, you know what I'm saying? Like it was really promotional, like you, know, you couldn't clear the sample so you put it out. Sometimes artists would be going through litigation with their, their own label and they might make some music they like, the, you know, the label might not let them put it on the album or whatever, so they'll just kind of sneak it out. It's really just for fans. It, would never, it never really was done for profit. It was more or less done for buzz and to get the music out because at that point, the internet hadn't really taken off yet. So it was a way to get, pe get music out to people that normally you couldn't get out. And most of the stuff was pressed in limited quantities because like, like I said, it was really promo only and it was white label. They didn't have any contact info on it so you couldn't get busted or they couldn't trace it. Sometimes it was just for speed, like because of the politics of the music business, it takes X amount of months to put a record out or whatever. Sometimes you might just make something great, take the dat down and get it, you know, press up a white label yourself and just press a couple of hundred just to give the DJs. A lot of those were actually snuck out. Those were like in the days of the recording studios, dats used to mysteriously like disappear from studio sessions when they, when they were doing you know recording in the big studios in the 90s. Like back then, you used to you know have interns that worked at studios because I used to work at studios myself and I used to hear stories about you know sometimes you leave a dat lying around or you give one of your boys a dat like yo we just did this and then mysteriously it will wind up in somebody's hands and boom they go press it and next thing you know it will be a white label. Are there any tracks that stand out to you that had uh, a really good beat or really good sample that couldn't get cleared normally that only exist in that white label format? Well, I know I don't I know that there was um there was one uh, Ghostface white label that was out because he had a lot of great songs that that didn't make it to uh, the Bulletproof Wallets album. What is it, Lord? See me in the club, got a gun on my leg. Select paper and invade all the illest niggas. Tally up, paint yo live crew meeting. Laying in the lab with robes of fly mo. We hold all niggas eating. Racket ball gangsters, unleash the law. Straight up, colorful drawers, bad whores on the weekend. Not, it's not always a sample. Sometimes you'll have a feature. Like, you know, you'll have an artist who have a, a, a better known artist featured rapping on a song with them, but then their label wants $50 million to clear this artist. Like, okay, if I do a record right now, you know, and I, you know, say, okay, I'm gonna go out and get LL Cool J and put him on it. We make a great record, but, you know, his label won't clear it. it. Becomes a white label. Like, for any, it was just really to avoid red tape. And, you know, there was, you know, the ghost face one I heard about. I couldn't even really, it was hard to find, but I mean, somebody snuck up. I will crush you to pieces. Stop your heart from ticking you mad, cause you were on the clock. Couple rocks missing in my brain. There's really no way to stop it, cause you never know who's doing it. And you know, these things are always pressed in like odd quantities. Like I've heard of records pressed in 250. I mean, this is the music industry and people find their way around stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like there's litigation, but people always find their way around it. And when you have a hot record and people want it, you're gonna get it heard.